Okay, it's Carl here from Games, Brains and a Headbanging Life, and it's my pleasure to be chatting with Guillermo, vocalist and guitarist of the neck-breaking, ear-blasting, skull-crushing thrash metal band Angelus Apartrida, ahead of the brand new release, the kick-ass self-titled album, which is out on the 5th of February 2021 via Century Media Records. Guillermo, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. How has the start of 2021 been for you so far? Well, first of all, thanks to you, Carl. Thanks for uh, having me here. It's a complete pleasure to to share this time with you. Uh, well, uh, as you might know, 2020 was uh, was supposed to be a, a very good year for the band. We got a lot of, a lot of shows. We got, we got a lot of tours. And actually, we didn't have enough time for a new album. That's why uh, this album was uh, formerly, uh, it was going to be an EP uh but we all know what happened in march so all the plans were just cancelled and then that's why we decided to keep on composing and finally entering the studio uh that, that, that's uh, all the risk i can do for the 2020 so um, I, I really hope that this year 2021 starts much better well, mm. okay the, it's it's not the best start of the year but as we can see on the on the world right now but uh, um, on the other hand, we're very happy with the result of the new album and with the feedback and uh, all the all the comments that we're uh, already hearing and watching through the through the internet. So yeah, we can wait for going back on tour mm. and let's see what's happened this year. And on a personal level, how how have you been coping uh, over the last year in this new world that we kind of all have to live in? Uh, what, what do you mean with coping? Uh, how have you been handling the, uh, yeah, these handling. changes? Yeah, well, I, I, I think like every everybody else, I mean, uh, just watching, uh, waiting <laughs> and and, yeah. and hoping that, that everything will be better. I, I don't know. It's uh, in the beginning of the pandemic, uh, we tried to keep calm and stay at home and watching movies and reading mm. books and and as i told you before uh, keep on composing more more songs but i think that after some months uh, we started to realize the 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 size of the problem that it was and uh, i i think that i still don't know how how it will uh, uh, affect uh, mm. my sanity because uh, i understand that I'm, it really affected me but uh, at least we were lucky enough of starting to to record this this album the last year. So yeah, we were trying to hand everything as as, as uh, the best we could, and of course taking care of our of our families and taking care of our of our mother and father. And for example, in my case, my my girlfriend she is a nurse. She works oh. in two different hospitals, and oh. she, wow. she works in the ICU. Um, so yeah, you can imagine every day was kind of a drama because there were a lot of people dying every day there. She, she was, uh, sometimes she was coming home crying. So yeah, we just have each other and just try to to take care of each other. So to be honest, I don't know how it will, it will affect my, my mind in the future, but I try to handle it with uh, the most um, uh, peacefully way that I can. That is that is simply incredible. Much respect to yourself and your girlfriend for those incredibly difficult things. Yeah, of course. Actually, actually, these days we are living the, the third wave, and things are are, are already uh, fucked up again. Not not that bad like in like last year, but of, for example, she is in the hospital again. She's working every day without resting, and it's uh, she's incredibly strong for her, of course. So yeah, please everybody stay safe there. <laughs> don't don't do dumb things. Absolutely. And as 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 a unit, the band. Have you all found it easy to adapt and change perhaps how you normally were making music or conversing and hanging out together? Well, it was not that hard because uh, since we are a band that we toured a lot uh, mm. for, the last, for the last 10 years, we are touring extremely a lot. Uh, so uh, it was quite easy to adapt to the situation of being separated. Actually, we, we, we live in different cities yeah, uh, it's only Victor and me. We live in the same city. The other two guys live. Uh, okay, it's it's not far away, but there it actually is. Uh, 
different cities. Mm. So um, yeah, it was uh, it was nothing strange. Like uh, for the last albums, we always composed alone at home. I prefer to compose at, at home and write music alone and my, with my computer and you know writing the the main riffs and then uh, sending it by email. So for the last ten years. Uh, uh, that was the way we were working, actually, and we normally we don't rehearse, uh, we don't go to the rehearsal room, and, and unless we have something new to prepare. So mm -hmm. it was quite easy to adapt, and actually for the recording sessions it was quite the same. I mean, everybody was just uh, learning how to play each part of the songs, and then we got together in summer, and and in September we started to record the the album. Uh, uh, it, it was quite easy in the in in this way. So. Uh, the, the the only problem with the pandemic, I would say, is not tuning at all. Yeah, because, uh, actually, actually, this is a main job; it's a full time job, and uh, it's already ten months that we're not working. It it's uh, the situation is getting a bit uh, complicated <laughs> economically. Uh, I mean, but for the rest of the things, uh, it was quite easy actually. That's good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, of course, we're a few weeks away from the release of the self titled seventh album which is strangely just like over two decades since your formation. Do you find or in yourself as much as the band that you're as hungry and still excited as you were say 20 years ago? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, time passed so fast. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's uh, of course it was 20 years of the, of the band together, but we started being uh, very small kids. Uh, this is the first band we, we ever been um, I started playing in Angelus when I was 12 or 12, 13 years old or something like this. Mm. Uh, I, I don't remember well because uh, David and Victor were my very first friends that I was uh, sharing music and talking about music because my other friends and the school friends, they, they, they didn't know nothing about music and of course nothing about heavy metal. So the, the, they were my very first uh, heavy metal friends. And of course my brother, Jose, the, the bass player is my blood brother. And he is the one who who taught me to to uh, play guitar. Um, he was the one who was buying all the music, and I was listening to the music with him. So and, and together with my other brother. Um, so I mean, uh, the, uh, I, I remember every year, every every single step we we made uh, in these past twenty years. But the thing is that we feel. I know it's a topic, but we feel younger than ever now. I mean, we are still very young. We're the, between 35 and 40 years old. Mm. Uh, uh, so we, we, uh, we're we young guys, are still healthy and young. And we got uh, a lot. I think we, we still got a lot of future. And actually, we, we feel very young because we since we are a big band in Spain, we are a complete unknown band for the rest of the world. So this is like uh, every every new album we're, we're uh, releasing, it's like a new presentation for gaining more people and covering more countries and spreading our music uh, as far as we can. So uh, 20 years later, we find uh, we find ourselves with this new album, it's, which is called uh, Like Us, Angelus Patria, because we think that is uh, uh, the best uh, presentation we can have for someone that never heard about us. And we can be more proud about this and very happy and very excited. We still got the same uh, butterflies in the in the stomach every time we are releasing the new single. And, you know, it's like super nervous every time we go on, on every show. We are super nervous. I get every nervous, every show so nervous. So it's like that kind of magic that never ends. It's the what make us uh, stay together and with the same uh, excitement and the same dreams like we got uh, 20 years before. It's amazing. I mean, it must help keep the sort of fire burning in the band that you are such a unified force, right? What? What? Sorry, sorry. Uh, the to the excitement you talk about and the butterflies and the fact that you still feel so uh, hungry and excited about it. Does that come yeah. from the fact you are such clear, so clearly a unified force together, the the band? Yeah, yeah, of of course, but it's like because we're we're all in the same boat, but uh, uh, we know what we want, and we mm. still love we we love heavy metal. We're not here for the money. I mean, there are there are bands that when they start making money, they just get comfortable. And but uh, I mean, we're like kids. We're still like kids, and we got this uh, excitement, like you said. And and uh, yeah, and it's because we're the the fourth of us. Uh, we are like a solid union and we are, we, we think in the same direction and it's like, uh, 
I mean, uh, sometimes I don't, I don't need to ask the other guys to know what they are thinking. So it's, uh, it's very strange, but at the same time, it's super, uh, how to say it? I mean, it's uh, knowing that your life or more than, more than half of my life um, is dedicated to making music and playing a life for people. And, and once you are on stage and you see the people, it's like, it's something that you cannot explain with words. Uh, okay, it, it, maybe it, it, it sounds a bit uh, <laughs> like fantastic, but for me it is, of course, uh, even playing uh, aggressive music. So yeah, it's, uh, this is the main reason why we keep doing this because we still got this butterfly uh, in the stomach and, and this, uh, this is excitement like 20 years ago. Um, yeah, plus I just can toast for another 20 years, at least. Exactly that, right? Yeah, hopefully in 20 years' time, we're having a similar conversation and you still have those butterflies. Yeah, I think, I think so. <laughs> I so hope is, so. I'll... So is the music uh, a good way for you to kind of get your anger out? Do you kind of like bottle it up until it's time to express it again? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, this is my the way I, I can express my myself, and especially the way I can put down all the anger or the hatred I, I could have uh, because of situations of life. Mm. And of course, I always say that this is what makes me try to be a better person. And of course, try not to be aggressive or violent. I'm not a violent person. I'm not an aggressive person. Mm. But I love that my music looks uh, so violent and aggressive because it's the way that I can release all these uh, bad emotions of, of my life. And for the rest of, of these guys, uh, the rest of, of my partners, that they don't uh, write the lyrics, but they understand them every time. And, and of course, the, the, every time we're playing the songs live, they feel the same. It's like a kind of release. Man. And to, it, it's the way we have for try to be a better person, better people. Yeah. That's wonderful. I mean, and going on to the album now, there's a fair bit of modern relevance throughout the new album. Tracks like Indoctrinate, The Age of Disinformation, and Disposable Liberty have a fair bit to say. Now, would you consider yourself political or is it just a matter of refusing to ignore the obvious around you and using that as inspiration? Yeah, exactly. This is the like the eternal uh, uh, discussion. You know? What is political and what is not? I, I never thought that heavy metal, I never thought that uh, trust metal was political at all because I understand as political, like someone is trying to to put some ideas on you, like, uh, and especially political ideas, which uh, is a thing that we don't do. Uh, I don't give a fuck who, what you vote for uh, or what's your ideology. But uh, we always try to, to write down things that we don't like or, or even that we like. But this time, uh, things that we don't like, things that we think that they are injustice, or we, we, we push and we try to fight uh for human rights that i think it's nothing political but it's something very important for a democratic society uh um lately we we could see a, a lot of problems all over the world mm. uh problems that we, we were not seeing for decades you know it's like again there are problems with racism problems with homophobia and all that stuff which is i think it should be completely out from heavy metal and that's why we did we decided to 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 make a video clip like the one in indoctrinate like uh showing like gay couples and black people and chinese people and it's like everybody together and not only because of their condition and or or the race or the uh or their sexuality but uh even the music that they listen so that's why there are different uh, people so when they're like rappers there are uh, new metalers there are classic heavy metal they are uh, punks skinheads there are everybody because this is our life i mean uh, our friends are all these people is uh, completely different people so this is what we want to to express with our music and that's the what we we were doing for the last 20 years so always trying to to uh, make uh, some statements uh, uh, i mean defending human rights so it depends what you consider political i, I mean I, I i don't think that our music is political because uh, as I told you before, I will never show what is my ideology or what mm. is my. Because nobody cares, actually. Like if, if if someone wants to to know this uh, 
they can ask me in any show, hey, what's what's your ideology? And we can share a beer and we can talk about this. But this is not about our music, but we think it's important in this, especially in the in the music that we play, uh, or this is what I was listening when I was a kid, especially with the thrash metal and the hardcore punk scene that is uh, one of my biggest influences. It's like fighting for human rights. And this is uh, what we, we try to, to express uh, with our music. Which is, of course, completely, completely understandable, completely fair. It's just interesting because, of course, you could take certain tracks and you can attach them to whatever situation your life is currently going through. So if you're an American, you could maybe put the age of disinformation in relation to tweets and things like that. If you're on Brexit, yeah, exactly. where we are, Brexit and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Exactly. I mean, the, the, the age of this information talks uh, absolutely about this, about all the, the fake news. We're mm. just... Uh, the reading every single day, you know, because it's a kind of funny situation. It's the this is a time of history uh, where the human being got the more information in your in, in your pocket. I mean, you got the smartphone, and in any at any time you can you can check whatever you want, uh, like uh, verified information. But then we stick to a stupid fake news, like uh, someone tells something through WhatsApp or someone just uh, uh, copy a tweet, and this is the true information. It says really. But so it's like this is the, the funny. It's like we're living the, the age of this information, and um, it, it's uh, it's funny, but at the same time, it's it's very dangerous. But uh, but I don't think it's something political. Like I think it's uh, just something uh, social, and uh, that everybody should just uh, think about it. No? Yeah, absolutely. You kind of already mentioned this already, but obviously the Spanish metal scene, the Spanish thrash scene, isn't isn't something that's well known around the world. But you guys are certainly proving that it's possible to become a more worldwide name, something you've obviously been working very hard to do over the X amount of decades. Is it, is it as exhausting as it sounds? Because you've been working very, very hard to get to where you are now. Well, it's, uh, well, it's, it's been exciting, but at the same time, it's been very exciting. Mm. I mean, uh, the, the, the Spanish metal scene is a, it's a huge scene. I mean, um, nobody will... will will know this if, if you're not in this country. I mean, there are uh, there are hundreds of very good bands. Uh, we got a huge uh, amount of people every day. There are like, I don't know, 10 or 15 micro festivals here in Spain. Every mm. band loves to play in Spain because the, the audience is uh, amazing. But at the same time, it's a country that was not exporting bands at all. Especially, and, and we could say that we could say that maybe Angelus Apatria was the first band to be exported like like this, mm. and it was a really really hard work because there was no there was not a previous band doing the same. So, okay, there was not a market way, uh, there was not a, a way of of, of um, I mean uh, we we have to carve everything and and work and and find out what was there, and. Uh, so it, it was a hard work, but at the same time, it was very, very exciting. And nowadays, we got a lot of new bands coming up from, from Spain. And, and we're really proud to, to be part of this, uh, of this scene and be one of these first bands uh, doing this in a worldwide way. I mean, in an international way. Because at the same time, we got a, a lot of incredible bands that they sing in Spanish. So they are very big bands here in Spain and also very big in Latin America. But of course, for the rest of the world, they don't exist because they, they never heard about that. So yeah, I, I just can invite everybody to check the many Spanish bands. And, and of course, if, you, if you're if you able to come here in summer and you can attend to any festival, just don't, don't, don't hesitate to do it because you're going to you're gonna find uh, crazy festivals with uh, incredible good weather and with a lot of local bands as well. So yeah, definitely. I think it's Spanish scene right now is, uh, in, my, in my opinion, I think it's one of the best in the world. Yeah, it's incredible. It's interesting as well as you talk about uh, younger bands. Does that make you kind of feel old and elder statesman of the scene? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I, sometimes I feel all that as well with, with this, but no, no, come on, no. Uh, I'm still very young. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, finally, I mean, the year ahead is looking good for your live calendar. You've got lots and lots of festivals planned and obviously hopefully much, much more. I already know the answer because you, you talked with such passion at the start of the interview, but you seem so ready to get back out there and bring, bring this album to the live crowd, right? Yeah. I just can't wait for this to to pass. I mean, the, the pandemic to to be over, 
because not only because we are uh, companies that you before and we just need to tour because we're already in red numbers and we need to make a lot of money, <laughs> but uh, because I need to keep my state of mind, uh, I need to keep my sanity and I, I need to do what, what I love. And of course we got, uh, in my opinion, an incredible album. In my opinion, I got uh, we got the best album so far and I can't wait to play these songs uh, alive. You know, and start touring again, and and of course try to, to to get all the all the festivals we got planned for the last year, uh, going back maybe next year, maybe this year, maybe next year, but keep on touring and and yeah, back to normality. I, I just can't wait. You know, you don't uh, you don't know how much you miss something until you lose it, mm. and this is uh, the way we feel with the. Uh, with touring and it's not only because this is our job but the, this is the what i need what i need to do really it's like wow i cannot be at home anymore i cannot be doing like office work anymore i, I need to be on, a, on the road i need to be in an eyeliner i need to be in, on stage and 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 having like uh, the, the amplifiers cranking it up and all stuff so yeah i can't wait for this so hopefully this will be over the vaccination will work and maybe by the end of the year we can go back to normality. But uh, by the end of February, we would of, of of this month of next month, sorry, we will try to make um, some shows here in Spain uh, in order to promote uh, mm. the album. We will try to do that kind of uh, social distancing shows. I know it's a, it's a bit shitty, but at least it's something. Um, That's the and yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Actually, there there was uh, like three three weeks ago, something like that. There was an experiment in Barcelona. Uh, a huge venue made an experiment together with a couple of hospitals. Uh, tried to to uh, to see what happened if you can, if you make a show with a. Uh, with full uh, with full with full people, I don't know the word in English, but uh, it was like one thousand people that they were uh, with. Um, they they made a test before the show, and they were tested after the show, and so it was like a control situation. Ah. And there was like zero percent cases of coronavirus in in that show. So it maybe it will help to start doing shows uh, during this year together with the with the pandemic meanwhile it is uh, getting over uh, so let's see I, i'm just keep uh, fingers crossed for this to happen because we everybody needs music come on but of course uh, yeah. the musicians and the technicians everybody needs uh, there are a lot of families to depend on on this on, on live music so yeah hopefully we will come come back to on tour as soon as possible Absolutely. Guillermo, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Well, th thanks to you, Carl. It's uh, been a pleasure. Sorry for my English. Uh, I promise that next time I will try to improve it. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash gbhbl as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal, what else is life for?